tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to set up the Ioptron Sky Guider Pro tracking mount for astrophotography. And I'm going to show you the setup which I much prefer, which is the one with the counterweight fitted, uh, because uh, not only does that give you a better balance, but it also enables you to polar align after you attach the equipment. So the first thing to do before you go out is make sure that this is fully charged. It's got a rechargeable battery in it. You plug the uh, USB cable into the small connector here, plug it into a USB adapter and leave it to charge up. The light, uh, charging light, is a little confusing. Uh, when the uh, tracker is turned off, it doesn't operate, so it doesn't tell you the charge uh, level. But when you actually apply power and switch it on, uh, it does tell you. And uh, so if it has a slow flashing light on it, that means the battery charge is getting very low. If it has a solid red light, that means that you've probably got enough to do your session. And if it's flashing fast, that means it's fully charged. So when you plug it into charge, you want it on until really until it flashes fast, so you know it's fully charged. Now I also use one of these uh, battery packs, booster packs, and I use that as a backup in case my uh, mount charge gets low, but also because I always take a dew heater, dew strap with me, uh, which is a USB dew strap, and that can also plug into the same adapter here. It's got three USB sockets in it, so that's a handy thing to have. So let's get going at setting this up. Now we start with the Altaz head, uh, and that's going to go on the tripod. The tripod needs to be nice and sturdy and level. I'm using a Novo tripod here, uh, which is a particularly good one, very stable, but light to carry. It's the Explorer T20. Uh, so set that up nice and level, nice and firm, and uh, then we're going to attach this head. Now the head has altitude and azimuth adjustments on it, and it also has, uh, as well as adjustment screws, it has locking screws. So to show you, uh, the uh, altitude uh, is set by adjusting this knob here, but you first have to unlock it by loosening this uh, lever there. So we've got a graticule around here and we need to turn the thumb screw until the arrow points uh, pretty close to our latitude and then we lock this lever off and that's the elevation uh, set up close to the right place. Now the azimuth you want to undo the two vertical pointing screws this one and this one just loosen those off a little and now just start by adjusting these two bolts until they're both uh, roughly the same amount engaged into the block. So they're roughly balanced there. That gives you an equal amount of adjustment in either direction. And now tighten these two vertical ones off. Not crazy tight, just get them finger tight so it's not going to move too, too easily. Now we can attach the Altaz head onto the tripod. So we're just spinning it down onto the quarter inch thread. And tightening that off. Okay, so there we've got the Altaz bracket mounted on and the next thing to do is to put the actual tracking head on. Now it's got a dovetail on it, there's a dovetail slot in the Altaz head and the tightening screw, so we'll loosen that screw, insert the head and then tighten that screw off. We'll take out the little plug for the polar scope and now we can fit the counterweight bar. So with the bar at the bottom, and this little thumb screw at the top, engage all three pegs into that circular red part and then tighten up the thumb screw. I've got the clutch open so it can swing. And now I'm going to put that little plug back in so I don't get dust going inside on the polar scope. The next thing I'm going to do is put the counterweight on. So I'm going to undo the little protective button and fit the counterweight. The counterweight actually is not completely symmetrical. Uh, there's one way it goes on where it can actually drop down below the button uh, and uh, the other way it can't. So just take care which way up you put it. So there's the counterweight, I've got it roughly in the centre position at the moment. Now, the next thing we're going to do is take a ball head. Now this does not come with uh, this mount, but it's a standard photography ball head to go on a tripod. I often use it on the top of this tripod. and. Uh, this is the thing that gives us the freedom to point the camera wherever we want to. So I'm going to engage that 
onto the top of the screw at the top of this bracket. You may find that this screw is not in place on the bracket, maybe in the kit of parts, and you'll need to fit it to the bracket. Make sure that's nice and firm. And you notice I'm not taking too much care not to disturb this mount because, of course, we haven't polar aligned yet, so it doesn't really matter too much about disturbing it uh, at this stage. Okay, so we've got the ball head on there, and now we're ready to fit the camera on the top. So I've got a DSLR, and uh, my, my ball head has got an Arca, Arca Swiss bracket at the top of it. So I've got an L bracket attached to my camera, which is an Arca Swiss L bracket, and that allows me to just simply clamp on there. And I can use uh, my camera, either landscape or portrait, uh, when I attach it that way. So now, by undoing the ball head, I've got complete freedom about where I point my camera. Point it wherever in the sky I want to point it. And it's a good idea to get yourself at this point organised so that the mount, this axis of the mount, is pointing as close as you can get it to due north. Maybe take a compass with you to get that right. Uh, get that roughly due north. Point the camera roughly towards where you want to photograph. And typically here in the northern hemisphere, that's the uh, Milky Way over in that direction, so something like that. And, uh, and now we've got it roughly there, we can now balance. Obviously, I need to tighten that off, <laughs> I don't want that falling. So we can now balance, and uh, you'll see at the moment it's slightly counterweight heavy. So I've just moved the weight up the bar a little, and now it's reasonably well balanced. If the camera's pointing off to the side, you'll notice that the balance will be slightly off uh, when it's vertical compared to horizontal, and you can get quite big differences in balance between the vertical and the horizontal position. There's not a lot you can really do about that other than adding weight on the side, which is very awkward, not easy to do. But the mount's pretty tolerant to stuff like that, unless you've got a really heavy uh, payload on there. Okay, so basically we have an on-off switch here, which I'm gonna turn on. And you can see that I have a solid red light, which means that I have enough charge to do my uh, imaging session. You'll also see that you've got a uh, red light up here on the one times and if I press this button with the circular black dot on it you'll see that that is cycling around between uh, the sun which is the solar rate tracking the moon which is the lunar rate tracking the half times which is half sidereal tracking and the one times uh, which is the full sidereal tracking and we've also got the uh, S here you see that S, the light under S is not illuminated. S is for the southern hemisphere. So if you're in the northern hemisphere, you do not want that lit. If you're in the southern hemisphere, then you do. To change that, you press and hold this button until this flashes, and then you press again one time, and then you see that's off. If I press it again, you'll see the S light is now on, and then I can press and hold again. And now I'm turning on and off the uh, polar scope illumination. And, uh, and now we're back to cycling through the tracking rates. So we're now set up for Southern Hemisphere, one time sidereal tracking. I'm gonna change that back to Northern Hemisphere now, that's where I am. Press and hold till it's flashing. Press, press until the S is off. Press and hold again, press and hold again. And now I'm on one times. You might be wondering what the half times rate is for. The half times rate is if you're trying to take a scene with a, a static foreground, you've got the sky moving, obviously the stars moving on, in the sky and the foreground is not moving. The half times rate kind of balances out the blurring effect of the sky and the foreground, so they get, it gets shared 50-50 rather than all being on the foreground. Personally, I prefer to use the full sidereal rate get the sky really sharp and then switch off, uh, actually switch off the tracking and take some specific shots with the foreground uh, as part of my imaging sequence and then blend the two together and then you get the best of both worlds, you get a really sharp foreground and a really sharp sky as well, uh, merging them in Photoshop. So that's really all there is to uh, the using the sky guide amount. These two arrow buttons allow you to make some adjustments, obviously switch it on first, and uh, you can make some fine adjustments to the right ascension pointing, see that turning there, and back the other way. 
and that can be quite useful just for fine-tuning your shot although I tend to do my framing certainly with a wide angle lens I would frame my shot really by loosening off the, uh, the ball joint and repointing the camera okay so now we've set up the mount and the basic balance I'm going to fit a dew heater to the lens you do need a dew, a dew strap that's the right kind of length so you measure the circumference around uh, as close to your objective lens on the front as you can get and then you want to strap that fairly tightly around your lens try not to block access to your manual focusing ring and try and get that as near to the front as you can get it so the heat really gets into your uh, objective lens on the front uh, now as i said before i use a uh, power pack so i'm going to mount that power pack onto uh, my tripod using a couple of strong elastic bands and then plug the dew heater into the port on the power pack and I can adjust on this one you can adjust the amount of heating that you get from the dew heater so I like to use uh, this Pixel Pro TW283 very low cost it comes with a wireless remote and uh, a receiver the receiver goes on to the hot shoe the flash hot shoe and screws on and then there's a, a short link cable and the link cable plugs into the remote socket on the camera and then just press and hold to switch that on a couple of seconds so same thing on the remote press and hold for a few seconds to switch it on and uh, I can program a delay at the start and then how long each frame is going to be how many shots it's going to take and how much time to wait in between each one uh, on my particular camera if I want a 60 second uh, shot I set the camera to mirror lock up two second mirror lock up so that there's no vibration in my shot from the mirror locking up and then I'll actually program this with 62 seconds on some other cameras like the 6D Mark II you don't have to add the two seconds it somehow caters for it automatically so uh, just a bit of trial and error and you'll soon find out from looking at your shots how many seconds exposure time they were and, uh, and you'll get that right so that's the wireless uh, remote make sure your batteries you've got full uh, full charge batteries in both parts of that before you travel an important tip so the next thing to do is to set up the uh, camera settings for the shot okay so I'm going to take you through the settings that I would use so we'll start on the menu first thing on the lens set it to manual focus and switch off your image stabilization you need to set your image qual uh, quality to raw and uh, I turn the JPEG to off so we don't generate unnecessary data. Image review time, you can either have two seconds or turn it off if you wish to turn it off. Um, not worried about beeping, etc. Okay, so the next menu, uh, nothing particular to do there. White balance, you don't need to worry about if you're shooting raw. And uh, then you've got long exposure noise reduction, that needs to be off, so make sure that's off. And high ISO speed noise reduction, make sure that's off as well multiple exposure disabled HDR mode disabled and then you've got the mirror lockup the mirror lockup I like to set to the maximum of two seconds that means it will lock up the mirror and wait two seconds before it actually takes the shot uh, live view shoot we're not worried about too much although I'm going to use live view to take the two do the, the focusing and uh, those are the main settings there. Autofocus we're not worried about because we're using manual focus. Playback we're not too worried about. So make sure you know which card you're recording to and also make sure that that card's got plenty of space on it of course because you may be taking quite a lot of photographs. And uh, what else do we need to set up here? Nothing too much. So that's essentially it and now you want to put the camera into manual mode and uh, experiment with your uh, different settings so uh, your exposure time uh, you can try using a rule of 500 it's a bit outdated these days I would start with 300 to take 300 and divide it by your focal length so if you're using uh, 25 millimeter for example then uh, you want uh, to use something like 12 seconds uh, so 300 divided by 25 uh, which is 12 your aperture wants to be either wide open or maybe one stop back 
from wide open just to get that extra little bit of sharpness but you want to really let in as much light as you can so either either one or the other there uh, your ISO I've done a separate tutorial about ISO uh, discussing what the optimum or how to determine the optimum ISO uh, for astrophotography with your particular camera on mine it is ISO 800 so now the camera is set up for uh, for astro imaging so once your equipment's all set up on the mount and you've set up all your camera settings uh, you still need to polar align and to focus your camera accurately on the stars I recommend you do the star focus first so undoing the, uh, the ball head turn your camera around to point at a bright star put your camera on live view and use the live view zoom with maximum zoom to put a bright star in the middle of your shot and then adjust your uh, manual focus ring to get that star as small as you can and then after then make sure you don't uh, uh, knock that focus ring because that will spoil your shots for the evening once you're uh, uh, you've got your star focus, uh, then reframe your shot and then you need to do your polar alignment. So remove the plug from the top and the cap covering the polar scope eyepiece from the bottom and now follow the polar alignment procedure and I've done a separate tutorial on polar alignment that you can refer to for the details of how to do that. Essentially you're adjusting the uh, altitude and uh, the azimuth bolts on just on the Altaz head in order to get uh, this axis, the RA axis and the crosshair in the middle of the polar scope aligned with the North Celestial Pole. So I'll leave you to look at the other video for that and then uh, once you're polar aligned and focused and you're, you've framed up your shot you can start shooting for that night and uh, I hope you get great data, I hope you found this useful and I wish you clear skies. See you next time. Thank you.